Okay, welcome back to my Python speed run uh, with me, Mr. Denton. Uh, this one here says, uh, so 2.8 uh, centuries, given a year, find the respective number of the century. Okay, so the 20th century is in 90, begins in 1901. Okay, the 21st century begins in 2001. So we've got to read in, we've got to read in a year. From the year, we've got to work out the century. Okay, so there's basically two options, either uh, the, the either the year is a is a round hundred, in which case the century is whatever um, whatever that is. So if the year mod one hundred, if that equals zero, so that means the remainder is zero, then the century can be equal to the whole number the bit of the year divided by one hundred. Otherwise to be equal to that plus one yeah, because the 19th 1901 is the 20th century 19 plus 1 is 20 so, <coughs> so that's how it's going to work so, so it's either whole number divided or it's the whole number divided by 100 plus one okay and we're going to print that out that seems reasonable Remembering our symbols for whole number divided and um, remainder. We can run that. Pop that in there. 1901 should be the 20th century. And Bob's your uncle, Francesca's your uncle's mistress. Boom! So I've done that one. <laughs> okay, so next one. Also, if anyone's worked out how I can just flick to the next one without going back to this list. That'd be cool if you could tell me, because I don't like the flicky back and flicky forward and the flicky blah, 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 blah. Okay, so cupcakes costs dollars and cents, and you need that many of them. So in this case, they're expensive cupcakes. They cost $10.15 each. Okay, so if we need two of those, it's going to be 2 times 10, which is 20, and 2 times 15, which is 30. So you'd have thought you'd just do the number times by the dollars value, times by the cents value, and then just output them. The problem is, that if you times the cents, then you're going to get some dollars, right? If you times 15 by 10, yeah, you're actually going to get $1.50, right? So you've got to do the dollars value. Um, so input dollars. Input. Notice when I'm doing this, I'm always giving my, or I'm trying to always give my variables meaningful names. So this is dollars, this is cents, uh, and I also need number number of cupcakes okay just to describe what it is that this value represents right okay so i need to know okay so my dollars value my initial dollars value is just going to be whatever my dollars value is times by the number that i need right if each cupcake costs one dollar and i need ten of them then it's going to cost me ten dollars right ah i then I then need to get my whole dollar value yeah, from the cents because if each of them costs $1.50 and I need 20 of them, then actually my cents value is going to add up to $10, not cents. So I need, to, I need to times it by the number of cupcakes and then I need to do a whole number divider. Yeah? So do whole number division with 100 to, to get my... Ah, okay, to get my dollar value. So dollars equals dollars plus that. Yeah, so it's whatever the dollars value is plus how many extra dollars I get when I do my cents value. Yeah, and then my cents value <coughs> is going to equal that. And then whatever's left over, my remainder, you notice how this remainder function just keeps coming back, keeps coming back. It's very important. And then we just need to print out two numbers, the dollar value and the cent value. We do that with the comma inside the print function. Okay. Press submit. Realize that I've messed it up already. Maybe I haven't messed it up. Maybe the replic's messed it up. Okay, so this is good. I'm just copying all my code. And then I'm hitting refresh on my uh, refresh on my replit. 
that way if I refresh it and it loses all my code, I'm not actually going to lose out because I can just paste it back in. Oh, it doesn't like this. Uh, oh, no, wait a minute. Dollars not defined. Ha <laughs> ha. Dollars, dollars, dollars. Where is it? Dollar. Zzz. Dollars and cents. I should read the errors and stop messing about, Mr. Denton. Read the errors. Try not to go so fast. Okay, so that's me. Cool. And there we go. So that one, that one's worked. Okay, uh, so that was 2.9, uh, 2.8. They're using something called hexadecimal there. Okay, now, uh, days of the week are numbered, blah, 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 uh, zero to six. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, da, da. given the given K, given one number, this is K, which is in the range one to 365, which is the day of the year, find the number of that day and work it out as a day of the week. However, January the 1st was a Thursday. Okay, this is going to be weird. Okay, so, okay. I don't know what to give, what number to give this. So if, if the first day of the week, the first day of the year was also the number one day of the week, so, so one was also one for the, for, for the work day, so Monday, then the day would just be the year mod by seven, right? which would give us the remainder. So it would either give us a number one to seven because it was one to seven, or it would give us the remainder, which is still gonna be the weekday, right? But it's not Monday, it's Thursday, we've told. So I've got a plus three to this. Okay, and then I can print out that value. So let's have a look, I can do my day, run that and see what happens. In fact, no, I'm going to stop that. I'm just going to submit because, you know, this is a speed run after all. Okay. Year is not defined. Of course it isn't. I called it, I called it K, which is what they told me. Okay. okay. Be a bit more. Okay. So one worked, two worked, three worked, four did not work. Okay. So they expected to get zero, but they got seven. Okay. Now, if you're modding by seven, and actually the days of the week, in this example, they go zero up to six. So there shouldn't be any seven. I should have gone back to zero. So what I really need to do is I need to take this whole thing and I need to mod it with seven again. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm actually plusing three to it. And now I need to mod it with seven again. Double mod to get double remainder. It's not really a double remainder. It's just a single one. Okay, nice. There we go. <laughs> Okay, now we've got digital clock. Mm. What's going to happen here? Given the integer n, the number of minutes that's passed since midnight, how many hours and minutes? Okay, so minutes past midnight. Mins. Okay, so minutes after midnight, and then I've got to work out the hours. Well, the hours is just going to be the minutes. Mod 60, right? That should do it. This is easy compared to the last one. So mod 60, so that should give me, ah, no, not mod, wrong one, whole number divisor. So that's how many hours, and then my minutes, I'm just gonna do that, mod. Okay, so whole number division by 60 gives me the number of hours. Remainder division by 60 will give us whatever minutes are left. Okay, and then I can print again on two lines, not on two lines, on the same line, yeah, I can test that out. Boom, 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 boom. Nice! <coughs> that one was a bit easier than the last one. I'm not sure why that was the next one. Okay. I have a feeling this is a tricky one. The hour hand of a clock turns, whatever that says, theta, theta degrees since midnight. Determine the angle by which the minute hand turned since the start of the current hour. Okay. Okay, this is a tricky one. So there are 360 degrees in a whole turn. Yeah, so that's 
12 hours, so 12 is 360 degrees. So, hmm, I think I've got to do a little bit of calculation for this one. So, I'm going to work out this is the hour hand degrees. Then I've got to work out the minute hand for this hour. So obviously if this is one twelfth, so if this is equal to if this is equal to one twelfth, then the then the minute hand has already done three hundred and sixty degrees. So whatever I do, I'm gonna to have to times by three sixty at the end to get the minutes. Yeah, so I think I'm going to have to divide it by 12. Okay, so I need to do, so minutes, I think I have to divide it by 12. So times that, or no, divide that by 12. Yeah, divide it by 12, like a real number divided by, then, and times it by 360, and mod it by 360. Bit of a convoluted one, that one. I wonder if that's going to work for any. I've done that all in my head without really working out on a piece of paper. I think this one, this one might be one where you need to work it out on a piece of paper. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so that is just wrong. Okay. Okay, so I've had to cheat a little bit. Okay, not good uh, trying to do lots of uh, mental calculation uh, when you're doing a speed run. Okay, so what I've worked out in my with a bit of calculation is that my hour hand degrees, whatever, however many degrees that is, uh, it's going to be 30 degrees per hour, okay, for the hour hand because the 12 hours on the clock face and 360 divided by 12 is 30. So for every 30 degrees that the hour hand moves, it's moved one whole hour, okay? But we don't actually care about the hours part. We just care about the remainder minutes part. So, so we're gonna have to do some kind of mod, yeah? So we're gonna have to take this and mod it by 30. Okay, that will give us, so that will now store in the minutes the number of degrees that the hour hand has moved. Okay, um, in terms of the minutes left over, not in terms of the whole hours. And then that's 0.1 degree per minute. Okay, so we're gonna have to divide it by a half or I can just times by two, okay, to get the degrees, uh, to get the minutes, actually, to get the minutes from this degree hour hand. Okay, if I times this hour hand movement by two, I should get the number of minutes. And then I've worked out 360 divided by 60, because that's how many minutes are on the clock face. That means it's six degrees per minute that the minute hand moves. So I've got to times that by six. I think that's it. I think, I think that's my calculation. So however many degrees my hour hand has moved, Mod that by 30 to get the number of minutes from the hour hand movement. Times that by two, actually no, mod it by 30 to get the number of minutes in hour hand degrees, times it by two to get the number of minutes, times it by six to get the number of degrees that the minute hand would have moved. <gasps> okay, so a lot of mental calculation and had to pause it for a bit and take that on, but yeah, we got there in the end.
just a little bit of maths and logic. <coughs> okay, so I think I'm going to do this one and then stop on this particular speed run. Okay, a school decided to replace school decided to replace the desks in three classrooms. Each desk sits two students. With the number of students in each class, print the smallest possible number of desks that can be purchased. Okay, number of students. Okay, so that's the number of students. So you've got to add them up and then work out the desks. Yeah, is that right? So, okay, so A, B and C. So, ah, I've just spotted a potential problem. So what I was going to do, I'll talk about what I was going to do because I think a lot of you might do that actually. I was just going to say that the number of desks is going to be equal to A, B, and C added together. Add them all together. Um, divide them by, what was it, two. Whole number divide them by two because each desk can sit two students, I think. Um, and then if there is a remainder, yeah, ah, yeah, so it'd be something like um, if uh, if a b, and c, a, b, and C mod two, so if a, b, and C mod two equals zero, that means there's an even number and they should all fit on that many desks. Right, it's a bit like this is a bit like our century calculation. Uh, whereas if that's not the case, then that means there must be one person left over, and they're going to need their own desk, right? Yeah, they're going to need their own desk, so I'm going to have to add one to that because there'll be an extra desk needed. Okay, now I have already spotted a problem with this, um, but I'm going to run it as this goes because I feel like this was the obvious answer. I feel like maybe some of you will have gone for this. Uh, and I can show you what happens, maybe, and then we can think about how to do this more effectively. Aha, so it worked for the first one, didn't work for the second one. So there's, and this is why, because if there's one student in the first class, and there's one student in the second class, and there's one student in the third class, if we add them all up, we get three which if we do a whole number division by two, will give us one with one left over, which actually would add up to two desks, which is how we've done it. But actually, they're three in separate classrooms, so each of these are going to need their own desk. Okay, that's why I kind of thought, okay, we're going to have to do this separately. So uh, it's just a bit more long-winded. We're going to have to do this. We're going to have to do this for each individual item. Okay, so we're going to have to do A separately yeah and b separately and c separately so a so that will give us the value for a yeah then have to do the same thing this is where copy and paste is your friend you have to do the same thing for b uh, at the moment i can't think of a a less long-winded way of doing it. And at this point, because we've already done it for A, we're going to have to add desks in there. I'm being really um, like careful about my brackets. Uh, you will probably need to be as well because obviously brackets like in maths it can affect your calculations depending on what they are. So I thought it was simple. It was relatively simple, but not as simple as I thought it would be. Boom. Okay, and that was Mr. Denton's speed run um, for the rest of the two point whatever values. I hope this is useful. Cheers. Good luck.